Over the next several videos, we're going to explore the register block type function, which is how we will create blocks in our JavaScript. Now, register block type is the JavaScript function used to create custom blocks, and it's available in global scope. So if we were to type it out fully inside of our JavaScript that is enqueued properly and loaded after the WP blocks library, we could just write wp.blocks.register block type. Now in our code, we're probably going to deconstruct the register block type function itself from WP blocks, as you see at the top here, and then we could just call register block type on its own. Now it's going to take two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the block, and this is a programmatic name that includes two parts. The first part is the namespace, and this is going to be unique to our plugin or a subset of blocks. And this is going to be all lowercase separated by a hyphen and then a forward slash. And then we give our actual block a name. And there are places within WordPress that we might want to reference this. So this does have to be unique. Again, the namespace followed by a unique name for the block. Then the next parameter is the settings parameter, and this is actually an object that contains a whole bunch of stuff inside of it. So we'll look at that on its own, but in short, the register block type, you basically just give it a name and some settings configurations, and then in the Gutenberg editor, you have a new block. Now that seems pretty simple, and it sort of is, except now we need to look at the settings for register block type. Now the first thing we have is the name of the block or the title of it, and this is going to be a human readable name. So when we gave register block type the programmatic name, then we have the title, which is how it's going to be referred to in the editor itself. That comes along with a description as well that we will add, which will appear in a sidebar, which we'll look at shortly. And then we have the category. There are several different ways to find a block, and at this point, these categories are locked down, but in the future, this will likely be extended. Then we have the icon that appears, and you could either use default dash icons, which WordPress offers by default, or you could pass in an SVG, which we will look at as well. Then we have this nice little feature, keywords. If the name of your block does not include all of the keywords that you would want somebody to use to search for your block and find it, then you could add additional keywords as well. We have a supports feature, which is not really going to be used too often, but this can enable or disable certain block level features for that particular block. Then we have the very important attributes, which are going to identify dynamic data in your block. So that is anything that could be editable or might be tied to a meta field or something that would be in one of the settings or inspector controls. These are all going to be identified and tracked via attributes. Up until this point, all of these are basically properties in that they are strings of text or maybe an object or an array passed in or an element in some cases, but they are pretty simple stuff. When we get into the edit setting, this is actually going to be a function we pass back and it is going to have the entire UI for editing a block. And that includes all of the JavaScript for making that UI work, track itself well, update, and then pass the data back into WordPress. So this is going to be a pretty hefty section. Your edit section may be longer than all of these others combined, although attributes can get a little bit long if you have a lot of dynamic data. However, luckily there are a lot of conventions and components and ways that we could do this in an easy way that WordPress provides. And we will look at this in depth, mostly through our examples. So finally, we have the save setting, and this is going to be, again, a function just like with the edit function, although this is going to determine how stuff should look on the front end or be saved into the WordPress database as part of the content. So usually you want something to look on the front end the same way it does in the admin area and the editing experience be as close to a live preview as possible. However, there are some types of blocks where you might want to change the editing experience to look a little bit different when you click in to edit it, but then you could still click out and see it how it would render in save mode. So edit and save are not usually gonna be the same thing and save is usually going to be a little bit shorter because it doesn't have to control edit functionality. Now, here is an example of what this could look like with all of the settings configured. You can see we have our name and then we pass in our settings. We got our title, category, icon, keyword support, edit, save, and we are leaving out two, we're leaving out description and attributes just to save a little bit of room, but you could see the general format of how this will work. So inside of our plugins and when we get into working with the example files, you will see something that looks like this to start. So again, what we're doing is we're basically just calling register block type, passing a bunch of settings, including some more powerful ones, edit and save. 
And what we're going to do from here is go down the list of each of the different settings, look at them one by one, and get an idea of how they really work and what we might need to do to configure and work with them in our own custom blocks. In order to follow along with the next several videos where we explain how register block type works, we're going to be using a plugin with two blocks. The first block is going to be a block that shows us how register block type works. And if we click in and look at the block inspector control, we could see that we could go through each setting and see what it looks like in code. So this is just a helpful tool right within the WordPress admin area for you to be able to see these different settings and follow along. And we will look at this one by one again. The other block that comes with this is a demo block that we will build that is a simple call out and you can edit this, and it has all of the different configurations and things set up that we will look at in this register block type explained. This is also the same plugin that we've already looked at a little bit in this course, and we could see that if we go into blocks, we have our demo one that we're building, which we will pop in from time to time to look at how different things are set up. And then we have a register block type block, which we won't be looking at how it works so much, but this will be the one that we look at in the front end or in the admin area to look at how blocks are working. In order to get this plugin up and running, you could go to this plugin repo, how to Gutenberg plugin and download this. And basically you want to install this Gutenberg plugin zipped file here. And you could do that through your admin area and then you will have access to those two blocks. And then once that's installed, you should see Gutenberg, how to create a block. And when you come into your Gutenberg editor under blocks, you should see how to create a block block with the little js for wp wapu and then a demo block with the WordPress icon. So that is what you'll need to get set up and running. And from here, we'll just go through each of these different settings one by one so we really know how they work and then we could get into our examples.